caught this big sucker last night. So I'm just going to show you a basic prep video of how I prep eels for smoking. This guy's a good size, so I've already wiped them down to get as much slime off as I can and cleaned them up on the outside. They're still whole. Um, just use newspaper and some gloves to do that. You can put a bit of salt on or soda crystals, helps get all the slime off. <coughs> um, and when we catch these beasts of our waterways, these river monsters, and you pull them up, whether you caught them in a hinaki or on a hand line or a spear or however. If you're spearing, you want to try and get them through the head. Um, hopefully hit the, the nerve bone and whatever and put them out nice and quick. If you don't, however, get them out of the net or off the hook. This fellow was caught on the hook. As you can see, he's actually had mine all set up on little traces so I can take them off. He's, he's actually swallowed the hook going right down in there but anyway first thing you do is you put your boot on them and I just get my, my knife straight in through the head to try and uh, kill them humanely until he stops moving that's when you know you've got it in the right place and the other thing you've got to do with these eels is you've got to bleed them so if you have a look here just at the end of the tail put the knife in there and if you just keep cutting away until you until it starts bleeding quite a bit and you get the little uh, little blood vessel there. You've got to get the blood out, it makes the meat and everything a lot cleaner. Uh, someone once told me that eel blood is toxic to humans and I can imagine because they live in all sorts of different dirty little conditions that aren't very clean so we try and do our best when we're preparing them. Okay so first things first you need a real sharp knife okay that's important. This little knife here is an old hunting knife of mine but it's got a real good good rough edge on it for cutting eels. So what I like to do, sit him on his belly like that and I'll start start from the head end about here and go down the middle so I open them up from the back and cut them from the, from the back like this so when I come to do the cutting up for portions the belly flap's still intact. Oh, well, woof. Err, around. Err, around. Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> Making lots of noise. So. Handy dandy, sick of tears. Alright. Easy. Okay. Keep your, even though you're wearing gloves, try and keep your gloves clean. Everything's about cleanliness. Now we're going to remove the spine. Okay. I know a lot of you folks won't even bother going this far, but I enjoy it. So now see that? If you look closely, there's that little line there. Where the bones become not bones, that's the line we want to cut on. Like such, there you go, and you got your all your bone and bits of gristle. Bones and bits of gristle in one go. Nice and clean. So if you've got any of these uh, little meat hook type things, you can just go through the side of the jaw there, or the top jaw. Just like that. And we'll hang him up, eh? So there he is hung up in the shed. I've just got a couple of hooks up here where uh, I hang deer and things like that but just hook them up like that and um, 
because he's open quite wide I don't really need the toothpicks to keep him open but normally I'd put toothpicks just in between here just to keep him open like that and preferably have him somewhere in a bit of airflow so there he is with the toothpicks just to help keep him open yeah so I'll probably leave him like that overnight to be honest hopefully he'll dry out um, if I had an outdoor area that was covered um, from the rain then it would offer a little bit of a breeze safely where the dog and cat couldn't get it I'd do it but I don't so I'll have to stay in here overnight and I find if you put them in a the fridge like that they don't dry out the only fridge I got is this little one here and it's occupied a bit of venison so we can't go in there so here we are the day after a little bit wet outside anyway here's our eel now it's been hanging here overnight if you look closely you can see it's quite it's quite dry um, still heads nice and clean there's like very very little fly blow on there at all maybe it's just a few eggs just in there but that's okay because we'll cut that bit off nice and clean nice and dry it's, it's quite set you can tell even more when you turn it around and go on the other side it's quite uh it's quite firm it turns leathery quite hard that's what you want so it's nice and dry we'll move on to the next step right so here's our eel on the chopping board taking the toothpicks out taking the hooks out now before we start chopping them up just go over a few things what we need is try to put the eel in a bit of lemon lemon pepper some salt a bit of brown sugar now eel uh, if you're not going to smoke it all straight away it, it freezes quite well but here's some I had from um, October of quite a lot smaller eel but I just chop it up into portions just like like that and um, put them into freezer bags and it freezes really well you thaw it out and teriyaki it in the pan um, fry it whatever you want smoke it it uh, copes quite well so there's our eel what we'll do is we'll take the head off now what I like to do is have that as a portion so cut straight across like that make sure you get through the leather you can see there's quite a nice amount of meat on there Presentation sake, so you have a whole bunch of pieces all nicely smoked like that presented. It's attractive to people, they want to eat it, it looks nice. So that's important because often people's first experience with exotic food like eel is really good or really bad. So you want to try and make it as good as you can. So you get to share it with everybody and you have to go and get some more. <laughs> That sharp knife, that nice sharp knife, hopefully it's sharp, oh, it's a little bit blunt. And just put that over the top of your eel. Now often, you tend to go to a little bit of effort to harvest some eel from the wild, so why not take the time like this to prep it nicely? It makes all the difference when you come to eat it, eh? Just like a piece of venison. You don't throw it around like a piece of dead meat, you look after it as best you can. And when it comes to eating it, it's bloody delicious. Oh yeah. it's so effort. here's our eel. Been about half an hour. So good, everything sort of sunk in a wee bit. Check that away. Now, surprisingly, not everyone knows how to use a smoker or has ever used one. So here's my smoker. It's very, very well used. Oh, trout, eel the old car wire and bits and pieces so here I've just got like a manuka blend it's just a cheap Bunnings mix 
And oh, that's not enough. Well, wow, it's actually heaps. You really don't need much, eh? Oh, and put like maybe yay much in. Or just sort of spread it out like that. Sometimes the steel on the bottom of the smoker there it pops and it throws chips up all over your food. Get a bit of a pain. So what I got here is just a um, a rack from uh, my lovely wife's kitchen. Don't tell her. And I've just put like a wire mesh over it. And I just stick that there. So when the when it pops from the heat, it doesn't throw chips all over my food, but it still allows the uh, smoke and stuff through, and it catches a bit of the drip. So that's good. Now what I do, I'll put my bottom tray on. Grab the top tray. If I can squeeze them all on the top. Now I find if you put just a bit of meths in, and then just a bit more, that's enough. Now you can overcook eel real easy, so it's better if you actually put less in. And you want that enough time that it heats up and it cooks through only just and gets a lot of smoke. So if it's underdone, you can always do it a bit more. But if it's overdone, you can't go back. So just enough all the way. Put a lid on. On properly. Now matches. Get a match out. And just stick it on there. And let it go. Nice and easy. Now we wait. Been going a couple of minutes now. Just starting to puff out a lot of smoke. So that's good. There's that pop I was talking about. So you really only want to leave it in there another five minutes top. I think the meth's still burning, but I suspect it's been long enough, so... Uh, yeah. mm. Now that to me looks done. Nice bit of orange on there. I'll just move the whole thing off the... Uh, Away from the mess. Tom. Now that is a beautiful piece of boneless smoked fat juicy eel. Now you know when it's not overcooked, when you can still see that juice in between the skin and the flesh. Pieces put them in the pan. And my lovely wife doesn't eat smoked food. So I've got to give some to the neighbours. That's okay. Yeah. A little bit of chips got through that bloody hole in the mesh. Have to make a new... Uh, New mesh wood chip blocker. Now, to me, it doesn't get any better than that, folks. So, let's try a bit, eh? Just cut that one. <laughs> Well, that's my eel smoking tutorial video, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. And uh, get out there and get yourself some eels. Beautiful.